Hey, Mike from Prep Pros here. I'm now in my eighth year of being a full-time SAT and ACT tutor. I've worked with over a thousand students. I've helped students score perfectly on both the SAT and ACT. I've published books. I've written thousands of practice problems and pages of materials. And in March, I went in and took the SAT and I got a perfect 1600. So if you are looking for expert advice to quickly improve your SAT score, you are in the right spot. Now today we're gonna to talk about how in a short period of time, because we have a little bit less than a month until the May SAT, how you can improve your score as quickly and effectively as possible. Now, my first tip is to give yourself a why for SAT prep. It can be hard to stay motivated when you're trying to study for the SAT, so having a really good why can keep your motivation so you can study every single day. Now, this why can be one of a few things for many students. You can look at your colleges that you wanna to apply to and make sure you're getting an SAT score which is at that median level or above. That's gonna help you get admitted to the school. You can look at scholarships and you can see what you need to get for your SAT score to get a lot of money. And the third why for many students is just making sure you can enjoy your summer and not have to deal with SAT prep then. Now, tip number two is a really simple one, but this is to also sign up for the June SAT. And now you're probably wondering, well, this is a video about the May SAT. Why are you telling me to sign up for June? It's because the May SAT is such a challenging test for so many students, but it has nothing to do with the test itself and the content that shows up has to do with the fact that the May SAT falls during those AP weeks. So, so many students get burnt out, they're exhausted, they're overwhelmed, and they aren't able to score as well as they possibly can. And if you wait for your scores to come out, all of the June test spots are gonna be completely filled up. Now, our third test tip is to use practice tests properly. And this comes down to two different things we wanna do. One is making sure we're taking official College Board practice tests. Don't take Kaplan or Princeton review ones. They're not gonna be accurate to what you're gonna see on the test, but the really important part is to make sure we're properly learning from those practice tests. Now, with a little bit over a month until the May SAT, you can take four practice tests every weekend, but the big mistake that I see so many students make is they take a practice test and they learn how to do the specific question they missed, but they don't learn the content surrounding that question. The SAT repeats the same concepts, the same patterns over and over, but it is very rare that we see a nearly identical question test to test. So when you're taking practice tests, you should use these free diagnostic sheets that I have on my website to help you, identi uh, help you identify what type of concepts you need to study. And then during the week, you should spend the time learning those concepts. So when you see a similar question, which is related to that same concept on the next test, whether it's identical or not, you're gonna know exactly how to find the right answer. Now, my fourth tip is to focus on the easiest places to improve your score. At the end of this video, I'm gonna walk through many common scenarios for different students, so you'll know really exactly where you should be focusing and how you should be improving your score as quickly as possible. But one of the biggest mistakes I see so many students make is they exclusively focus on their weaknesses and they don't focus on their strengths. And focusing on your strengths is often gonna be the place that you can improve faster and it's not gonna feel nearly as difficult and as much of a grind to improve your score there. Now, my fifth tip is to make sure you're using good materials to study. We only wanna be taking official College Board practice tests, but many students will have their parents had purchased the Princeton Review or the Kaplan practice books, anything like that, and many of those problems are not representative of at all what you're gonna see on test day because these companies have been around for 40, 50 years and they're still reusing questions that they wrote 20, 30 years ago to save time and money. So make sure you're using resources which are accurate to what you're gonna see on test day. Otherwise, all that time spent studying and learning the content and doing practice questions is gonna be a waste. My SAT math book and all of the practice questions that I've written in my Ultimate SAT course I have really obsessively made sure they are very representative to what you see on test day. And many of the questions that I have written have appeared virtually identically on the SAT after the fact. Now, our sixth tip is a really simple one, but this is to order the question and answer service. You can do both this before you take the SAT or wait till you get your scores back in case you get a score you're happy with. But ordering the question and answer service is incredibly helpful because it lets you go back and view exactly what you missed on test day. And that way, heading into June, you understand whether you're making silly mistakes or whether there's specific content that you have to focus on to improve your score. 
Now, my seventh tip is to track your mistakes. And this is both as you're going practice test to practice test and is you're working through practice problem sets. Now, if you watched my video about how I got a perfect 1600, you would have seen me really break down the process and the really important principles of tracking your mistakes. If not, I'm gonna link that at the end of this video. Now, as I talked about earlier, we're gonna discuss the easiest places to improve. Now for the reading section, so many students, and most likely if you're watching this, you struggle with the timing, you struggle with understanding how you should be approaching the passages, you feel like there could be more than one correct answer, and you don't really understand how to approach many of the different question types. And this is stuff that you can really fix very, very quickly. Once you learn your strategies, once you start learning how to deal with the question types, and you know what's making stuff right versus wrong, your reading score can really shoot up quite quickly. And this is stuff that I have compressed down in my SAT reading course, in my ultimate SAT course, into a 40 minute kind of quick masterclass crash course. So students who have limited time know exactly how to approach the test and know all the secret tips and tricks which are gonna make their life as easy as possible. Now for writing and language, there's really two general things you wanna focus on. One is which choice questions. There's two varieties of these, but they make up a very large percent of the questions overall on the SAT. And the second one is learning your grammar rules. These are things which are very easy to learn in a quick period of time, and you can learn many of them in the free trial to my ultimate SAT course. Now for math, for many students, the best thing to do is simply after you've taken that diagnostic test to start knocking out the content that you struggled with. But a ton of students that I work with fall into this very consistent category if they're pretty strong in math. They're scoring around 660 to 680, 690 on the SAT. They understand around 80% of the content to 90% of the content tested on the test but they just don't get how to solve the weird way the SAT is presenting the questions to them. They're taking really long ways of solving the problems. They're making them way harder than they need to be made. And for so many of those students, once you fill in a handful of content gaps, all you really need to do is focus on getting used to the challenging types of questions the SAT is going to present to you on test day and the really effective, simple ways of finding the answers to those. And for all of my private tutoring students, what I do is I make them work through my advanced math course. This is gonna give them the skills and the understanding for how to spot the different types of advanced questions, exactly how they should be approaching them, and what is the easiest, most mistake-free, consistent way of working through them. And when they get to test day, they have this really structured playbook of exactly how to handle all of those difficult question types. And it starts to make the SAT math feel like a bit of a cakewalk. So if you're scoring in that score range, I absolutely recommend checking out my advanced math course. I promise it will work wonders for you. Now, I really hope this video has helped you out, given you some structure, whether you're using my resources or on your own for how you can prepare quickly for the May SAT. As always, if you guys have any questions at all, drop them in the comments below. So many of my future videos are created based off the questions that you ask. So drop them there if you have any questions. Otherwise, I really hope this video has helped you out. Please like and subscribe and share this with some of your friends.